All right, bring the music down. St. Ricketts, the catalyst. www.stricketts.com. They're our boys. They do it Tuesday night with what fire cannot burn. They do it Wednesday night with the catalyst. And we are here again live. This is Yo 2.0. Yo. Can you hear me? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. All right, I'm right, here. Make sure we're good. You're awfully quiet. Hey, yeah. <laughs> JD Wolf in the house. What is up, dude? Good evening. Thanks for tuning in again. This is Yo 2.0. And if you're a fan of the Yo Show, you know that we have brought on a second night, Wednesday nights, to accommodate more guests and to bring on some awesome guest co hosts. Now, if you watched the show last night, you can hear me. Thank you. I know I'm loud. Um, if you watched the show last night, we got to meet a fabulous new member of our little family. Because once you come on, Allie, and once you slap your face into the screen, your family. I mean, you know what I mean? And Allie's in the house again. She comes back two nights in a row. So uh, what's up, girl? Say hi to the people. And uh, How you doing? How's everybody tonight? I hear your dog's at it. My dog is at it upstairs as well. That's perfectly okay, man. That's, that's the beauty of life. There's always room for pets come on here. this program. Do you want to get in the screen? No? no. Okay, maybe later. <laughs> I don't like to either. Oh. So, um, last night we had a great show. Allie got um, like immediately brought into the fire. Uh, thanks, dude. We love, we love, we, I, oh, pets. Yeah, we do love pets. Absolutely. Pets so, are the best. Exactly. I, I love, how can you not? Why do I look so dark? Am I losing light or something? Light, pitch black down here. So anyway, um, you know, usually Tuesday nights it's Jewel and I. And Jewel's like, ah, I got caught. Excuse me, I got caught in the work. So I was talking to Allie about tonight's show, and last night she's like, meh, I'll, I'll give it a try. And it took you a little bit of time, but now you got it lined up. You got an awesome backdrop. You got a little more professional scenery. So show us, tell us, what do you got going on over there? I'm not in my doorway like last night. Last night was so many technical difficulties. Oh my goodness. 
three yeah, different well, devices later, <laughs> I got on. <laughs> yeah, last night was a mess. Here, too, like, the internet was slow, and I'm on, like, my third computer now, and whatever, to get it to work, but we're here. What we do on the Yo Show and Yo 2.0 is we just talk about random stuff. We have fun. We do some topics. We have guests. Tonight, we got a super guest. This is a awesome world known DJ. He's got some big stuff he does in the East Coast, Atlantic City, New York, Philadelphia, much more. He'll be with us about 8 30 night. DJ Herbie Herbert. I keep saying Herbie Herbert Holler. We are a very special guest tonight. So we'll ask him all about the DJ realm. Allie wants to see. Well, you can always ask him if you can nickname him. Yeah, I like Herbie. It sounds a little more. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll fire it at him. See what he hey, says. Gangster, you know? right? <laughs> What's up, Herbie? I got ACDC on. Like I'm perfect for the DJs tonight. But you know, every DJ sneaks in that shook me all night long. Though, am I right? <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. Did it not kind of become a dance song out of absolutely nowhere? I'm surprised it hasn't started trending on TikTok yet. Right. I haven't seen that one, if it is. I mean, it was, there's a lot that I probably haven't seen that's trending, but I haven't seen it yet. You go to the infamous Wrinkle Ranch, which is now closed down, Michael's on Street Road, and they they started playing it. And next thing you know, like it became like a dance tune from yeah. Rock Race. I'm all right with that. Any song is a dance song if... If you know what the fuck you're doing, which whoa, Miss Lost my like, which I do not know. I'm, we're not dancers. We're talking about before and Allie's a dancer. I am not a dancer. Well, some say I'm a dancer. I have fun <laughs> when I'm dancing, so that's all that matters, right? <laughs> that's, well, that's kind of dancing. Um, for you watching it live or if you're watching recorded uh, later on, hello and welcome. But I want to uh, promote because we're all about promoting and uh, check out. Of course, Allie on TikTok because she's dying to get that TikTok pop. Violet Vixen, V I X X S Y N at TikTok and Violet Vixen on Instagram. I got to ask you, why two X's? Isn't triple X? Isn't that like the sexy thing to do when you went with two X's? I don't know. The two is <laughs> like kind of cool, like Sniper Wolf. She's got the two S's. Like, I don't know. I got gotcha. Kind of like, like Nikki Six is two X's. Yeah, exactly. I get it. It's pretty, it's pretty fucking cool. My like dog sex that's spelled with two X's also. There you go. <laughs> so what did, what can we expect to see uh, for the people out there watching, let's say, after the show? So let's check out Violet Vixen on TikTok. What are we seeing? What do, what do you got going on? It's all over the place. I basically try to do whatever I like that's trending and to kind of give it my own style. That's pretty I cool. I just started really getting into the duets and all that, so... I've yeah. been having a lot of fun with like all these different girls online and they do their dance and then I try to copy it and give them my own swag. But yeah, it's fun. One of these nights you got to teach me how to do any of that. Cause like I said, I'm, I mean, it's a disaster waiting to happen, but I think that people get their rocks off on my disaster. People actually enjoy watching me fail. Um, oh yeah, they love when you fail now. Huh, but now yeah. they've made it like a cool that if you like are dancing and you fall or you do something wrong and you fall, then you just kind of wiggle your butt like you get on the floor <laughs> on all fours and you wiggle your butt. And um, it's like a cool thing now. So My it's wife, like Cassie cool. Perini in the house. Cassie's a dancer, yeah. right? She's <laughs> gonna tell you she's not a dancer either. She's a casual dancer. Women move better than men, period. So I feel like any woman I don't know about that. No. Some of those guys on TikTok, Jason Derulo, for example. Back on that again. The mighty, the human the ad. I can walk on water. I mean, come on. Jesus. You're quite a fan. I did not realize that. How about that? I'm going to, yeah. uh, for the people who don't know, I'm going to show them this for the people who don't know. Um, where's that picture? Here it is. No, I don't want to play the song. I just want to get the picture. Now I got to go this way. So it's not a good picture. It's a little blurry, but that that's Jason Derulo and the big abs. And of course it's trumpets, which is like the greatest song ever. I heard, I listened to it earlier after I'm, we were talking about it. I did yesterday. Not, uh, not yesterday, today on the way to work. Cause on the way to work, I re-listened to the show the night before. Now when you're by yourself, do you do a dance at all? Of course. Absolutely. Play the trumpet. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 
and I'm like up and down. I'm swaying side to side. I got the whole dance I was going walking on. around my house <laughs> playing the trumpet. Yeah. Yep. Uh, J.D. Wolf, like we say, you get the right kind of music. You have one ad. <laughs> Jason Ruler's got everybody's ad. But if you're in the right vibe, like even like metal music, rock music, there's a way to dance. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, they do all those mashups and they're awesome. Exactly. And like I said, I mean, Allie went to corn. I'm sure she was dancing up the storm down by I the was. pit. <laughs> we all are. We all do. Having a grand old time. You don't have to With be like good. All these like hardcore corn fans standing around me. The one guy was like disgusted that I was <laughs> yeah. dancing and filming myself while corn was on like he kept looking at me he's in a couple of my videos like just looking at me in complete disgust but it's okay i had fun i had a blast that's all that matters it's your your ticket your money your life fuck it and um like you go to some concerts and people are like you put your phone away like why like you're you want to catch some of the action never you never. want to catch what you're doing right like that's why you're there like so you pay your money like I went to see um, Ramstein, and I don't. I mean, do hush, do It was like. The Why most... do I always think of how high? I always think of how high when I, don't I know. hear <laughs> anything about that song. But whatever. It was just the most wildest production of stage and pyrotechnics and all this shit. And you know, of course, everybody's filming it. And there's like this one guy around who's like, yeah, I wish people put their phones away like it's a concert. Right, dude? Like, you're capturing the moment. Fucking memories, bro. Did you bro. Do him in the face? Nah. You should have given him a little. Like, Oh, everybody gets a little at concerts. <laughs> or a lot. See, this isn't, no, it's this. People do this, no. That's like hang ten. Isn't that horns? That's, yeah, it's horns. You get people to go, no. There's no thought. Yeah. Well, you learn that on TikTok because they have all those hand challenges, which I am so bad at. Oh, the I'm down for hand challenges. Like, yeah. like, they go so fast. I sit there like, hmm, can you <laughs> huh? slow it down for me a little bit? Like it's going to a beat and it looks so easy, but yeah, it's way more difficult than it looks. I don't know if I can handle that. Let's give a uh, big... Good evening and shout out to my man Brian Snow from Snowman in the Morning with Cole Johnson. Hard hitting factual sports talk. Brian's a good friend of mine, great dude. We're, Hi, working Brian. On, we're working a little something special for the show that Brian's working on, and I didn't forget you, dude. We're gonna get that going. Uh Brian is a awesome podcaster, hard working dude, knows the sports, and he hates LeBron James. That's a beautiful thing. Does he like the Sixers? No, because he's not a he's not a Philly guy. So he uh, see well, I'm you know, all about the Sixers. I get you. Oh, so am I. Big Sixers fan, big Eagles fan. But the beauty of sports is people around the country who root for their teams. I got yeah. some smack talk for him, you know what I mean? I bet I you were having a blast when we were doing good. <laughs> oh yeah. That's well shit, yeah. I turned my life around i give her the rest of the house i hang in the basement which you kind of see here and i watch every sporting event possible on the tv and now i watch us on the tv it's actually pretty cool we're you know it's 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 some fun shit man like people say like, what kind of money do you make and and who follows you and blah blah money and i'm like business <laughs> and right exactly i are julius irving's sixers okay i get that irving was a legend uh, they won the title with Julius Irving in 83. That was... I'll take it. I'll take it. It's supporting a sixer. I'll take it. Exactly. Now I, I sucked him into it, too. We guilted him into kissing the sixer's ass just a little bit. I got you. That's the process. I've <laughs> been trusting that process for the last 10 years. I think I'm kind of running out of gaze. Stop that. Don't put that in the universe. Sixers, we got you. We have trust in that process. <laughs> we got you. The only process member left is Embiid. The rest of the world is is gone. They're all gone except Embiid from the process. Yeah. And, and I got me a little Joel Embiid, John, right there. It's my man. Nice. Hello, trust the process. I'm like kind of like happy when Simmons left. 
I was like good with that. A lot of people yeah, were a really bad attitude, and I was kind of over it. Plus, yeah, the guy yeah. I was dating at the time really liked him, so yeah. when he left, he was like all bitter about it. So I'm like, "Yep, yeah, mm-hmm. peace." I wanted Ben Simmons to be everything we dreamed. Amazing, of. yeah. But I came on the happen. show and ran about it one night, like ranted like hardcore about how people should be like supporting him. But in the end, I had I had the jersey. I'm not. I had the jersey. Really? In white and red. Yeah. Damn. Actually, it was like a cream color. It wasn't white. White. Yeah. Well, next time you're on, you got a rocket for. Our, for no, our... I got rid of it. Did yeah. you? Did you burn it? No. Oh. Got to burn no, it. No, I. No, I just. I got rid of it. <laughs> it works. It's perfectly okay. So what's the shirt you got on? It looks like it says tattooed. Vic. Look at that. This is by Pinky Star. <laughs> it's a badass shirt. I like that. This is like my shirt that I always seem to rock when I go to the tattoo convention. Because I can yeah. always do something different with it. <laughs> <laughs> How many tats do you have? I think 17. 17? Really? Uh, again, I have a lot. Not being totally classy about it. I don't there's none that are visible. Oh that one, okay. That one's visible. This one's visible. Oh, that's pretty badass. I like them. Hold on. These ones are visible. Oh yeah, they are shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure on one of my social media outlets, <laughs> all of them have been visible at some point. Somehow, some way. I love them. It's funny because I never, I still have not got one as we talked about last night. But I love them. I love Cassie's. I Cassie's got them. I'm not going to lie. I do yeah. have bad ones. Yeah. I went to tattoo parties when I was younger and I wanted Marilyn Monroe. And it just looks more did. like Marilyn Manson. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. So then I had her, I was like, you know what? Turn her into a zombie. She already looks kind of mannish and like not right. Like her jawline's like real. But yeah, I had her turn into a zombie and then like it was still ugly. So <laughs> I'll probably get it covered at some point. Thinking like a bat or maybe a crow or something. Damn, 17, though. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready for one. At least one. They're addicting. Yeah. They're really addicting. That's what I hear. And, like, I'm kind of a weakling for the pain. And that's why I want to do it on the show again to kind of make an ass out of myself. When I first get stuck, I know I'm going to scream or cry like a little bitch. I know it's going well, to happen. Well, it depends on your placement. And they'll even tell you that. I mean, like, I've seen grown men that you would never imagine crying over the back of her leg. I believe that. She has one he, on her foot. I she did. hurt a lot. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't do the foot. Yeah. I probably would, but I haven't done the foot yet. I have like the ankle going on to the foot, but I heard the foot hurts. Yeah, she got right on top of the foot. It was her first one. She said it hurts like hell. Can I imagine? But oh, like, first one. Oh, I got yeah, a little first butterfly one. <laughs> on my shoulder for my first one. One small. My first one's probably gonna be a lowercase J. Maybe I hear real tiny. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm a sissy. I'm a sissy for needles. Yeah, but it's not the same. It's not like going to lab corp and uh, lab corp or whatever and <laughs> uh, and getting like one of those big needles that you have to like watch. It's not like that. It's like more of an adrenaline rush and like, okay. you know, something awesome is going to come out of it. So you want to sit still and like, take it. If that makes sense. <laughs> Sounds kind of nasty, I but okay. Like if the pain equals something good, then it's worth it. I get it. So give me your description of it. Is it a pinch? Is it a, because people have mentioned it in all different ways. Pinch, prod. Depends where you get it. Yeah, it depends where you get it, and it like depends. A big thing it depends on is whether you've eaten before you got it. One time really? I got one in the morning, 
the, I got beautiful disaster across my butt and not for like the trendy reason that people are like, Oh, I'm a beautiful disaster. It was a clothing yeah. line that I loved and I love their whole like supporting all body shapes and the whole thing. And so I got their logo, beautiful disaster across the top of my butt. Well, I got it in the morning and I hadn't really eaten much. Like I had just had a little bit of cereal, like not yeah. like something like a sandwich or something. Right. And wow. I almost passed out. Really? Yeah. And for most of them, I mean, when I got my neck done, I was like practically falling asleep. <laughs> well, I mean, it gets to the point where like, you're kind of like used to it. Yeah. I, can I mean, see some that. people would disagree with me. I, like I said, it depends where you're getting it on right. your wrist. It's not bad. On your shoulder blades is not bad, but I'm sure like tender spots. I heard the elbow hurts too. Elbow. Um, well, let's go across the top of the butt. I mean, how much did it hurt? Um, it wasn't the fact like I just was very woozy. I thought I was going to pass out. Oh wow. Yeah, that that certainly does hype me up. I'm going to get one done. <laughs> yeah, you'd be fine. Just like, I don't know. I always, when I was younger, I always tried to have like something heavy metal on or something that kind of got my adrenaline pumping. Yeah. Most tattoo artists play Johnny Cash. I mean, honestly, yeah. that's usually what's playing at some point when you're getting a tattoo. But I mean, you have some that let you kind of bring your own playlist and. You just have Slipknot, Corn, and like, you know, Slayer, Pantera, like your usuals lined up. See, that would probably help me along. Music definitely helps me with everything in life. True. I mean, like, like even when I'm driving, I am so off unless I have music on. <laughs> yeah, oh, of course. You can't drive it out. And like, I hate working out, walking the treadmill, running anything. Oh, music yeah. Music. I don't understand those there. people that can read books while running. Oh, I don't know. Read books. <laughs> that how are you multitaskers? Like, how, how are you, you read reading books on a tablet still? while running? Like, <laughs> wow. People make me sick working out. Multitaskers. <laughs> I don't even read sitting still, let alone running. I don't run or read, so sure as hell I'm not going to run and read. I read Facebook every once in a while. I get like caught up because I don't know. Every once in a while, I'll just pick someone random and I'll be like, oh, let's find out about your life. So like I'll start like looking on their page or whatever. And people are just crazy. Like I, I don't I don't even know. <laughs> There's always that joke about like if a if a post is too long. Yeah, if your post is more than like four sentences, I'm out. Well, some of them I'll get like drug in because I won't even realize that it's like one of those novel things. <laughs> like it'll be like, oh, Joseph like left her while she was pregnant and took the dog and then put the dog like it, it's like all this crazy stuff. And I get like all into it. And then I'm like, wow, this is a novel. They just sucked me in. They got me. Dude, I don't want to teach you lessons, but you always look for that little where it says more. Sponsored. Yeah. Or where it sponsored. says yeah, where it says more. If it says more, it's going all the way down the page. Like I am such a more person. I always put a ton of hashtags, especially on like Instagram or TikTok. I put everybody tells me they're like, why do you put so many hashtags? Because I feel like putting hashtags. I put so many hashtags, mine always says more. <laughs> You're a more. So person. just expect it from me. I mean. All right, let me uh, find you real quick. Silent. Okay, we got it. We're good. <laughs> so what, what is your favorite social media outlet? I like asking people this. I know mine is. It changes. Yeah. It changes. Like, I mean, I'll I'll never give up on Facebook. I mean. Right, nobody will. I don't care. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Yeah, I mean, that's. It's always been a positive force for me. So, I mean. Facebook probably will always be there, but right now I'm really enjoying TikTok. I mean, Instagram, yeah, I like to at least post something every now and again, but yeah. 
I mean, once once October starts and I get into like all the Halloween makeup, then I kind of go back to all the sites. Yeah. But yeah, I like TikTok right now. All right, I still have not really done TikTok, so it's fun. It's quick. Like you can kind of put whatever on there. Give it your own style. All right, well, I'm down for that. Because everybody says advertise your show on. Just do like a 30-second thing about your show on TikTok like once a week. The shorter and you have it, the more views it'll get. And That's the more what I hear also. Up. Yeah. Like my friend posted one that was five seconds about furries, like sibling furries that one impregnated the other at a furry party, not knowing that they were siblings. Wow. And it went viral. Yeah. And it was only okay. five seconds. That's all I need. Yeah, there's something to it. It's pretty cool. I'll give it a shot. I don't, I, like, I don't really do Snapchat. I don't think I've ever sent anybody a snap in my entire life. I just The I funnier know. and the weirder you make it, the better. Yeah. Plus, people love like the couple stuff. Like You and Cassie would be great at it. I think so. She's adventurous. We got that. Like, even you guys doing little fun things where you guys are just being... You guys, I'm telling you, throw it on TikTok. I get a show. I gotta be the I gotta be the funny one though. It's like it's a must. You I talk about and do the little butt shake. There you go. <laughs> you talk about impractical jokers. Like I would like to lay her out somewhere on the street and something really embarrassing. Like set something up that would just be absolutely obnoxious, but seems real and then Is she scared of anything? Like can we dress up in a cat suit? I like <laughs> You dress up like a giant spider. She's not a spider person. <laughs> I've been through that. I worked in pest control. Not much scares me as far as insects and rodents. Do you and know that there's actually a company that you can send someone 4,000 live ladybugs? Yeah. Four? Really? Yeah. What the fuck? My friends and I are always looking for weird things. Yeah. You can send 4,000 live ladybugs. Like the person would open that and uh, what do you say to that? Thank you. I would, oh my God. (laughs) I would shit myself. I really would. 4,000 like that. I try to look at the positive. Like, oh, they're sending me luck. (laughs) Yeah. Well, look. Because there was something about like, I heard this a long time ago, and you said ladybugs. I don't know if it's true. If you could actually capture a ladybug nest and leave it undamaged, it's worth like hundreds of thousands of dollars. I can believe it. A chicken it nugget be- that looked like a president went for thousands. <laughs> like what? That went for like fifty-two thousand or something. Some shit like, like that. Crazy number. Like what? Dude, that I- nugget's probably non-existent right now. Like, where is he keeping it? Right, I really can't that. imagine see like, what kind of person bought that. Like, I never really <laughs> looked up who it was, but you got to be pretty weird to want a nugget that bad. Right, and I like, I can't imagine having the kind of money that's involved in buying a chicken nugget <laughs> that looks like a present for outrageous money. You see some some weird shit that people buy, like on eBay, and all. You're like, God, I can't. I can't imagine. If everybody's wondering what I'm doing, my dog keeps bringing the toy over, so I get a little toss. Her so she doesn't bark. <laughs> Multitasking right here on. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> get it. My dogs just fight over the toys anyway. They don't really. Once the little girl came around, I'm debating getting another dog for that exact reason. Why? Well. She just always wants to play. And like, yeah, I, true, yeah. for the most part, I play with her, but when I'm at work or whatever, I mean. Yeah, they wrestle hate, around and, and stuff. They're and like depressed. <laughs> they keep each other occupied. She does throw her toy. It's actually pretty amazing. That's pretty cool. She'll they're... throw it off the bed, jump off the bed, go get it, bring it back, throw it off again. I get that here as well. All right, so you're getting ready to get thrusted into your first ever interviewing session. Very cool. Our guest tonight is a super cool DJ. You look at his pictures and his videos, and just this guy 
rocks the house to thousands of freaking people. And I, I, I got to find out all about the vibes and how you make it work. Uh, our very special guest tonight, everybody, let's give a big hello to DJ Herbert Holler in the house. What's up, man? How you doing? Great. How are you? Oh, man, your, your audio sounds freaking amazing. I love it. Well, it makes up for my really crappy visuals. <laughs> it's not bad. It's a little dark, but not bad. Not so right. I got to get right at it. You have an awesome PR team, the group at Impact and, and Beatrice. And and she said, you, know, you got to check out Herbert. This guy is just awesome. And, you know, she said we'd be looking forward to this interview. And she's right, because I sort of found your stuff. And it's just so amazing how many people come watch you spin and, and play music. Tell us about something that's very big with you, the freedom parties. They always look like a packed house. How did you get into that? And what does a freedom party involve? Um, so so it started in 2003, and it was created to sort of answer the, 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 the way that things were going with the velvet ropes and the bottles only and this and that. And, um, you know, I just wanted to do something that, that was really, truly classic New York and classic old school and before all that stuff and just – maintain that for as long as i could to me that was what it was that's what it meant to be in new york and we to have that, that vibe we yeah so so you know i've worked with a whole bunch of different people over the years and now it's over 19 years and almost a thousand wow. parties later at that the, the, wow. the real goal the real treat is the frequency it's like because people will do a party once a year twice a year four times a year maybe monthly but i was doing a weekly for 14 years so now i'm almost at a thousand parties i think i when i started i had hair in my head <laughs> i'm with you <laughs> yeah yeah so um but you know it's it's um i i love to entertain i love to make people happy and that's what i do and i'm very thankful that i do it yeah it's awesome. that's so awesome go ahead and jump in Allie. We'll, we'll flip-flop take turns ask questions Allie's question gonna be a little more unique than mine because she's wants to dig in real deep on some of the inside stuff so go ahead and let it rip oh gosh <laughs> well, how did you like get into DJ? Like what really inspired you like musically? So so when I was a kid, uh, my dad used to be a food and beverage director at resorts in Atlantic City. Oh, wow. that's, where right. that's where I'm from, that area. Um, so, you know, I was going and it was the 80s. And it was like there's, there's Frank Sinatra was at the end of his run. I saw Sammy, it's him. I saw Sammy Davis Jr. I saw... Wow. Um, Liberace, Engelbert Humperdinck, Tony Orlando, Robert Goulet, like, you know, all these names. And, and you know, I was I was taking piano lessons from the dude that was playing at Resort's Biggest Restaurant, you know. So all of this excitement and this music and this 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 entertainment was just there from the beginning. And then um, you, you all might remember if in Philly uh, there was a restaurant called The Fish Market and it was on 18th sure. and Sansom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was owned by a very close family, a friend of ours in Margate. And my dad ended up being a GM of that place at some point in the 80s. So I would go there and it was still the, it was very exciting and the food was great. And then eventually it was like, you know, just the like just the smell of like a bar, the, the you know, <laughs> that oak wood and that stained with like conversation and sweat and alcohol it's like i just and the music and the lights i just love it all and so um you know so i went to school i was actually pre-med i went to nyu and i got an early decision wow. and then yeah. and then i you know i was going to be a so i wanted to be a psychiatrist i wanted to make people happy that way uh and then i went out one night and then i was no longer <laughs> it all just sort of like everything that was in me sort of came bubbling back up and like no this is you're not going to be studying for the next eight years of your life and you're going to, you need to be interacting with people. You need to be entertaining. And so I just started, this was 94. And I just, I became a club kid and I, you know, I held on to my grades and, you know, I graduated and, and I did a little writing and editing because I was, I had that for me. And then I just went full time in 2003. Um, you I know, stalked I your social media a little bit. You look like you guys are having so much fun. Oh, I yeah. mean, every part yeah. of the photo is just smiling and just happy. It's great yeah. vibes. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I tried my hand at comedy and I, I liked it and I was funny, but, you know, the gigs just started coming in. Um, and I was I was performing at UCB Theater. Uh, Amy Poehler was my coach. And, oh, wow. Um, so, there, you know, I, I just didn't look – I didn't – I needed money. <laughs> so as simple <laughs> as that. Is it that or I'm going back to Margate Lake City and leave my, you know, sleep on the couch? And I was like, that was not an option. I'm not leaving New York. So I was yeah. like, you know, I got to – so I just went, whole, you know, whole hog with DJ and, and here we are. 
That's awesome. And don't, you, don't you feel really because Allie and I have talked about it, and I talk about a lot of my friends, music is therapeutic. So you think by yeah. music and your psych, you bring it together, and you kind of know the vibe to give to people, and you know what to set off in people's heads? I don't, you know, it's it, that's an interesting thought, and I've never even thought about that, um, I, I, you know, surprisingly. I, But I don't think I'd go at it like that. I do know the end result is very therapeutic. I know I'm making people happy, and they're – they're dropping all of their small stuff that's bothering them and they're alive and they're, they're remembering that they're alive and that life isn't about all the little things that bother you every day. That's never going away. You just learn sure. to deal with those things. Wow. You know, it's, so it's, I that's, have that's, to that's, know that every DJ has one song or at least like, at least one song that they hate playing that they know <laughs> it's going to get everybody hype, but that they hate playing. Oh, we got to know yours. It's, it's, I couldn't tell you what it is because. Call me maybe. No, 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 I, I don't know. I don't hate playing that. I love seeing people happy. Wow. I really do. And I like, if you, if, if I got a dance floor full of people and they're all hands in the air and dancing all around losing their shit, like, that's amazing. I don't care how <laughs> I got to that. You know, um, I, you know, at the same time, I don't like sort of modern era hip hop with that's on that sort of that trap sound. I don't have to play that much. No matter how many people tell you they love Drake and how big he is, I don't get that many. Even at the private events with younger cats, I don't get a lot of crest for it. Hmm. It's very, it's weird. It's a, it's a very social media, it's a, it's an internet phenomenon. It's hashtag music. I think it's huge there and people rock to it in the cars, but like, it's not classic forever music. So I don't get asked to play that. A lot of them are so. taking clips and using it for TikTok and using it for little... They're just taking sections of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I just, I just love making people happy, and however you want me to do it, I'll be happy to do it. I love so many different kinds of music. Like the other night, I played at, at I did a, like at a wedding in Brooklyn, and I played "Islands in the Stream" by Kenny Rogers and Dolly. That's Park. a great song. And um, I was, mel I was melting. I love that song. <laughs> I love that song. But then I played some Biggie too, and of course, I love that. So I just, I, I like it all. I was just saying yeah. last night that my radio in my car has been down. So I've been Ooh. using like CDs that Ooh. my friends made me <laughs> right? back in the day. I just saw well, I'm getting it fixed. I just a, another week and I got it. Okay. But um, I've been using the CDs and playing. It's so funny because I have all different types of music on there. And it's like playing musical roulette. Wow. I, you know, Allie, if it gets really bad for you, I have my dad's 8-track collection. That <laughs> no, no, seriously. He's got like sticks and Fleetwood Mac. He's got a dope collection. My dad was rocking. Back in the day. It's only been for two weeks. And you okay. know what? My best friend and my son probably hate it more than I do because I would listen to Avril Lavigne over and over and over again. Yeah. I'd be perfectly fine. It's a <laughs> damn cold night. I no, love I that. I like her new CD. No, I have the new oh, one. Oh, no, oh. I at least Oh, the Skater like Boys? What? Oh, okay. No, she has a new one, and it's awesome. Bite me, okay, Travis right. Barker, Let's come on. It. She's hot. Oh, okay. I can't oh, understand no. the music, but she's hot, though. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure through the years, being a DJ, you get requests. What is yeah. the weirdest request somebody's given you, and what's the coolest that somebody's asked of you? Um, God, that's so hard. I wish I had these questions in advance. I could come here prepared. <laughs> That's um, the beauty of it. Um, yeah, we all, we won't give you that. <laughs> what's What's the worst request? Some anytime somebody requests a song that's playing, that's the worst. <laughs> like, how are you going to request a song that's playing right now? Because you know their friend sent them up to harass me. It's like, okay, that's that's blanket worst request ever. Wow. The best requests are the ones that come, and they're like. Either it's going to work perfectly with what's happening now. Those are just amazing requests. Like, wow. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That will rock. Let me try that. And it goes off. And I'm like, that's, that's, you did that. I'm like, here, take my headphones. You know, like, right. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> um, or like when they come up and they request something that's like so random that I love and that I don't think anybody loves, like a yacht rock record, like a, like a mm, Michael yeah. McDonald record or a Kenny Loggins record or like a deep South African house music record. Like, wow. I mean, I wish I could play that right now, but I can't play that right now. But thank yeah. you for requesting that, you know. So, do you like to get into like a lot of do you do mashups, like a lot of different? 
Um, like completely different genres mashed together. Well, yeah, like um, so a lot of the remixes that you buy. So really, what is a mashup? A mashup is taking two records and putting them together. And but I say that, that like taking one that's totally different yeah, genre yeah. than the other and putting yeah, it. Yeah, that's 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 a mashup is a type of blend. It's a type of mix. And and you know there was a there was a time when mashups were were enormous and like this was this genre and they were taking like Snoop Dogg records and putting them over like Africa Toto records and the rock and yeah. the rap like Limp Bizkit and Jay Z. Um, but really, all that was was just mixing two records together. So anytime I mix, I'm always mashing up things now things that are very you know polar opposite of one another right that it's happens cool. sometimes and i enjoy it but my thing is like a mashup sometimes pisses me off because <laughs> so you took nothing but a g thing and you took africa's toto and now i can't play either one of those songs in and of themselves because you just use them for this little moment to get everyone going hey. but they're like meanwhile i want to hear africa's toto Right, I want, to hear, Africa. I want to hear nothing but a G thing. I want to hear at least a minute or two of that record. Now I can't do it because I just gave you a snippet of it. So I was never a huge, you know, I was never got really into that moment, but I still appreciate it and enjoy it. I used to love the DJs at the club that instead of putting it together and actually DJing, they would just throw a grenade horn in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's it's a def, that's a device, and that's that's definitely you know. Sometimes I would hear that grenade horn like 50 yeah. times in the night. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, yeah we're going somewhere. It's like, That's pretty cool. The DJ asshole. Like, I would have to stay until like two. So I would be over that grenade horn. I know, I know, I know. Well, Jeff, what are you drinking? Oh, so I'm drinking. It's actually funny you ask. So this is a beer from a local band, Poeta. Uh, it's a great rock band. If you've never heard of them, they're local. You can find them on uh, Apple and Spotify. This is their beer they had made by Red Tank Brewery for their album That's release. Awesome. That's awesome. Oh, I see you so sipping cool. on something. I'm like, damn, what's he drinking? Why can't I? We, we drink here. <laughs> it was on my rider. Why don't I have it here? No, I'm just kidding. I don't. That's okay. You can always die. My wife didn't get the rider, so oh well. That's it. <laughs> yeah, we kind of uh, we go in a little incognito getting into the show. We don't give a lot of information, and it's cool because your PR firm and Impact kind of know our shtick, but never really tell anybody our shtick. So, which is very cool, and we like cool. we like a little bit of blindside because we want to know like your instant reaction to certain things. Cool, like I'm here for it. Also, like, like, what do you do when you're not DJing? There you go. I like that. So, so a DJ's job in 2022 is marketing yourself is okay. hoeing yourself hard <laughs> i slept myself out online <laughs> so much and i don't even i just I, I i i'm not even good at it i hate it like i don't do tiktok and i like like you know it's just i'm just terrible at it but so if the question is what do you do when you're not djing it's i'm marketing i'm marketing i market all week and then the weekends come i have my gigs and sometimes oh. those gigs are also in the week but that's what i do when i'm not working period um, that's what we want to know it's, it's, it's not that exciting no <laughs> i'm food shopping for the family that's pretty exciting i'm hitting golf balls i like that i'm <laughs> i'm working out i'm running and lifting um and then i'm going out with friends at dinner i just you know to you know and you know wait i'm supposed to be spending time with my family yes that's what i do i spend time yeah with <laughs> Yeah, let's clean that yeah. up, shall we? <laughs> yeah. I tell yeah. you, like there's only there's only so many hours in a day. Now, when oh you're out, God. when you're out, let's say you're out to dinner or hitting golf balls, whatever it is, yeah. or you're in the car with your family, yeah. and you hear a song come on, and are you thinking to yourself, "Wait, a minute, I could do this and this with that song"? Is every yeah. song every song yes. a piece of work? Yeah. Yes, I can't go to a department store. I can't go to a restaurant. <laughs> I uh, when I sit in the car, it's it's oftentimes it's either like super deep chill house music. Or it's like classical, I, I, or it's nothing, yeah. or it's nothing, um, because I just anytime a song is playing, I'm like, oh, I start to take notes. I'm like, oh, I can do this and do this, and do I have this? And is this in the right playlist? And this is the right folder? And blah 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 blah. It's just, it's madness. Um, so there's really chill stuff playing in my car, yacht rock or deep house or classical music, um, or there's nothing because as soon as I put on Pitbull, globalization, it's a wrap. 
I'm either killing everybody in the car. My dad loves Pitbull. <laughs> it's, I'll it's, go over the house and he's got it on his like Alexa. Yeah. Playing through the whole house. It's amazing. Like, and he's got great DJs and they're they're playing the great remixes and then they're playing African music and they're playing Latin music. And it's like, this is amazing. But then I have to stop and like take little notes. Okay, I need this record. Let me shazam this while I'm driving. It's like, <laughs> my wife is like, you do have children in the car, let alone me. So I kind of I just don't. Yeah, I try not to. It's really hard. Really hard. Got to avoid words like bitch and smack up and hoe. And I get yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The stuff we could definitely say here, but not quite in the car. Right, right. <laughs> so some of, the, some of the big cities, because we're East Coast people here. We're Philly yeah. people. Philly, New York, Atlantic City. How wild is the scene? Is it? Oh, is there always a gig? Is there always a party? Is there always something going on on the East Coast? Because we think it's great out here. And everyone's like, yeah, West Coast is where it's at. Oh, gosh. I hate LA. <laughs> I, I, I've been there a few times. I've played there a few times. I had one of the best gigs of my life there, and I'm, I appreciate it. But I think the problem is when you when you go to – is that – somebody has a bird? What is that? No, it's, it's my dog. <laughs> Oh, that would be my dog. Like, oh, oh. I'm so used to it. You gotta mix that. You gotta mix that in with one of your DJs. Your dog sounds like a cricket. Your dog sounds like a cricket. <laughs> oh, it's adorable. Watch, watch. The next oh. time he DJs, he's gonna have that little cricket noise. <laughs> so, so I think the issue is when we go to LA, we hang out with people that are not from LA. The LA transplants, the people that come to LA to find their their glory, are the worst people. <laughs> like you walk around and you meet and talk to people and it's like invasion of the body snatchers. You feel like there's nothing. There's like a shell of a human. You're like, hi, how? And you know, I'm a New York neurotic Jew. Like uh, that's what I am. And I'm like, I'm, my personality is I'm, I, sm I wear personality perfume. I'm hosing you down like a skunk with my personality. And they're just like, it's like they, 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 they took their headshot. And so wherever they go, they have to keep that same face. Like, you don't have to do that. Like, you can smile. You can frown. You can, you know. It's, well, it's, don't it's a lot personal. have Botox? If you're talking yeah. about L.A. area. I yeah, think true. Lot, probably yeah. have Botox. Yeah, like, but not for nothing. Like, you'd probably get even more Botox at, in Margate at the Jersey Shore. <laughs> so, yeah, true. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but no, it's just that I think that people are just really – Need to, you know, and then the native LA folks, the folks that have been there forever, they're mad cool. And I've hung out with some of them and they're cool. So cool. I, I, I don't, LA is not really a city. It's like a big expanse area. It's like, you know, their downtown is like, their city is really like this big. Like really? Philly's city, Philly's downtown is bigger than LA's downtown. Wow. Well, yeah, compared to New York, New York's just New York. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's no comparison. Yeah. It's true. You have an event, um, speaking of Philly, yeah. this Friday yeah. in Philly. Yeah. And um, a Freedom Party, September 16th. Philly gets a bad rap. From who? Is it? Oh, a lot of people give Philly a bad rap uh, all, over, all over the they, country. Same thing. They do the Jersey, too. Hype, though. We got real hype, though. Philly people. So what's your favorite out of the three? If you had to pick New York, Philly, Atlantic City. Uh, and I'm sure they all have a different flavor but which one really yeah. brings the party it, it changes oh okay just to be clear la sucks and it'll be never part of that <laughs> and in and out burger is trash they really? say oh in and out burger animal style i've had an animal style no animal style is trash y'all heard it here you anyway. all heard it here so, wow in and out burger is garbage it's so overrated. <laughs> okay, well, what, so what, all right wait, hold wait. on what kind of burger is your like go-to burger though Oh, I don't. I try not to eat burgers too much anymore. But, but if I do, it's like uh, uh, Minetta. The the Minetta, um, Minetta Tavern has like a Minetta burger. It's like a black label burger. It's dumb expensive, but it's it's so good. I mean, burgers. You know, you can't throw some salt on it, and that's good. I don't. It's not like. But I just remember going there, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, you have an ale burger? It's the best burger!" And I went there, and I'm like waiting this long ass drive through line, and it's like I got you got to get animal style. Because the first day I got it, I didn't get animal style. I'm like, that's why it wasn't good. I'm like, all right, animal style. It's like, you guys are full of yourselves. But I would say, so my favorite cities changed. Like, for a while, forever, it was New York. And then when I was rocking Chicago, it was Chicago. Chicago's an amazing city. Wow. Okay. Chicago's awesome. So I was yeah, doing Kanye that. goes on a lot about Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, a, he's a fucking asshole. But anyway. Um, <laughs> he's entertaining. Yeah, yeah. True. That's all that matters. I mean, he's not coming. he's not coming to your house for dinner, so you don't have to 
worry about the other shit. Probably not. But yeah, you never know what he's gonna say. So king fuckboy. But um, <laughs> Chicago is a, a great town. Um, but then like you know, it changes. Then it was New York. And now it's, it's really been Philly for me. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, I'm talking to you guys and I hear Jeff's crazy Philly accent, which I love. You know, Cause that's like home to me too. You know, I got, you don't even see what I'm wearing. What my t-shirt says. Hi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you already know it. You already know it. You um, know it. <laughs> you don't know. Now you know. No, no. You know, you know now. Dude. Um, but, um, you know, it's been Philly because Philly is so like, it's so raw to me. It's not full of itself. It's not over. It's not overly, you know, commercialized and commodified. There's still a raw vibe to it. You know, New York, it's getting harder and harder to tap into that because it's just so outlandishly expensive, you know, and Manhattan is not the Manhattan it was in the nineties. And when I go to Chicago or Philly, I feel like, okay, like, this is like, I, this is still cool. It's still cool to me. Um, and the, just the parties on the Mashulu, they just, they really pop off. Like people are just, now they pop off in New York crazy up on, on Bleecker Street at LPR. But there's something about being on that boat, you know, the Mashulu, yeah. and with the, you know, it's just, it, it's got a really crazy vibe. Even in the winter when they wrap the boat, it's like, it's still, it's still bouncing in there. So, yeah. That's super cool. And it's so right now it's Philly. That's awesome. And the thing about Philly and, not to take a dig at the city. I mean, we're right outside of Philly. I love Philly. We don't really think we're somebody. You know, we're the average. We don't class. really care. Right. We don't really care. We don't have to impress you and say we're this. We're just people who want to work and then have fun. That's it. But some Philly, I've noticed, have lots of attitude. But the interesting thing is it's sports. not because. About sports. I don't know about sports, but even about, about music, about art, about <laughs> a lot of things. There's like. I know like the biker crews in Philly are really like, but you know, the, the bike, the ones on the bicycles, there's a bicycle culture in Philly, a big one. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, they can be very <laughs> snotty, but you know, it's, it's not because it's not because you think you're all that. It's just because in my opinion, like you guys not only have really good taste, but you're really down to earth. You know, you're not you're just, you're, it's like, you don't care about the bullshit. Right. And that's what I've always noticed, you know, about, about you know, growing up in Margate, all my, some of my closest friends were from in and around Philadelphia. And like, you just, it's just down to earth. Like you don't want to deal with all that nonsense and all that other stuff. So that's, it comes off as like attitude, but it's, it's not like, it's just, you know, yeah. Salt of the earth stuff. That's why I love Philly. Thank you. Yeah, we have our vibe. <laughs> <laughs> So, an awesome show you got coming up Saturday, September 17th. Uh, you're playing the Showboat Sandlot, which, yes. if you've never been, is phenomenal. And it's a off the hook music and seafood festival. Dude, That's this right. just sounds like the greatest party on earth. Tell us what we can expect besides awesome music and lots of seafood. Um, lots of seafood. And, and if you're allergic, then lots of diarrhea. Um, <laughs> it's good. It's, it's, it's going to be tons of seafood and tons of music and live bands and the madness of the Atlantic City Boardwalk, which is quite mad. Yeah. I will promise you that. Um, that's Saturday. And then, of course, the night before on the Michelle and the Philly, the old school thing. Saturday, I'm going to do a lot of old school classics, too, because, like, I'm not going to be on the boardwalk in Atlantic City playing, like, Bad Bunny. Even though Bad Bunny's dope, like, I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to do classic R&B and, you know, oldies and funk and stuff like that to really, you know, pick your crabs too, I guess, because there's no dancing. It's going to be <laughs> crab picking music. I'm um, so excited to get out after the pandemic and after yes. being like... Yeah, it's still days. beautiful. Everybody's just so excited to be out and around each other and just having fun. Yeah. That I know yeah. every, like, since I've been out, like, the few things that I've done, like, since the pandemic, like, the whole vibe, people are just so happy. Like, they're yeah. happy to be out, happy to be doing something. Yeah, and just back to in the setting. Absolutely, and that's an interesting question. A guy like yourself, who is based on going out and having parties and going out around a lot of people, what did you do during the pandemic? And how much of a panic was it? Um, that's when I, you know, there are a lot of times in life where you you start you appreciate things and things remind you how appreciative you are of those things, and that was a point at which I was really reminded how important family is Wow! Uh, okay. because I, at one point when the bodies started piling up here in New York in U-Haul trucks or UPS trucks, 
whatever it was, I jetted. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to go somewhere where there's, where we don't have to stay in our apartment. And a family had a, some, some land in Indiana, some extended uh, in-laws or in-laws. And um, I went out there and um, I brought my DJ gear with me. It was quite a trip getting out there because this had all just happened. And we're like, we got to go. We kind of bugged out. And the definition of bugging out is getting your stuff and going. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hunk. It's a survivalist term, right? It's like, so we bugged out. We packed the car top to bottom with everything that we could bring, you know, toilet paper and paper towels and this and that and everything. Right. So, the, and then we stuffed the kids in to the point where like, you couldn't even see the kids. There was just paper towels <laughs> and things all around them. And we just knew there were bodies back there. And at the same time, I'm not making this political, but, some douchebag said, "Oh, maybe I'll prevent people from New York from traveling because I hate their their I hate uh, uh, Cuomo so much. And I'm just going to do it to be a fuck nut." <laughs> and so that added to like everything. So now we're like, we got to get out now because they might not let us out. Right. Little did we know that he was talking shit and he doesn't have the power to do that. And his personal vendetta against Cuomo didn't come after us, but we didn't know at the time. So we're like, so we have a fucking lunatic running the country right sorry fucking lunatic <laughs> in a high place and a pandemic that's killing people what do we do so we just we just bugged out we went and and we we drove to indiana and we couldn't stop because we didn't know if hotels were safe because there were reports of like oh uh uh, 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 uh corona's the coronavirus is passing through air ducts and you, you, know, you <laughs> sleep on a bed that somebody's like, nobody knew anything because the whole thing wasn't orchestrated properly. It wasn't organized. It was a shit show. And I'm so sure that we, was fun with the kids trying to yeah. maneuver. So, so, so this is what happened. So, so we went late at night, nine, thinking we'd drive straight through and get there nine in the morning, 12 hour ride. And like, but I got so exhausted. I couldn't pull over because anytime I pulled over, the kids would wake up. So I couldn't pull over to take a snooze because then they would start screaming. Um, I went into this gas station to get gas and I was walking in with like a hoodie on and a mask on and gloves. I was like, Darth Vader walking in this gas station. <laughs> and the dude behind the counter, like when I opened the door, I guess he didn't hear the news. He looked at me like I was fucking crazy. <laughs> and, like, burr, 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 burr. and then I go to get coffee. But I'm not going to touch the top coffee cup because everybody touches that one. I'm going for the one sort of in the middle. So my dumb ass tries to take it, and the whole thing spills. So now he's got this Darth Vader fucking lunatic with a big fucking bald head <laughs> destroying his place. And he's just sitting there like – and so I got it, got my cup, and I said, and I said how much? And I just gave him. He just looked at me like, have a good night. <laughs> so then I go, and then like at one point I'm like, all right, I, if I, don't, I can't pull over. They're going to wake up. I'm like I was I told my wife I'm like I'm gonna put this in cruise control I'm going in the right lane I'm setting it at 55 I'm gonna close my eyes you hold on to the wheel if there's a truck just wake me up <laughs> that didn't work for longer than like now I can I can imagine <laughs> that was the only so I just I don't know I was just beside myself so I had to constantly it, it was just really 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 hard uh, but we made it out there and um and I brought my equipment with me and I set up my equipment on my mother-in-law's like beautiful chest of drawers it was an antique. I just plopped my shit right on top of that. <laughs> and not, it was kind of not going to knickknacks. You gotta do. Because I was you DJing like I was, area. Yeah. I was yeah. I was making mixes and then doing a couple live streams, and then my view was like the woods. Just throw some place. lights up. It was a party, but it was a <laughs> horribly scary time. Yeah. Because I was hypochondriac i mean i got myself tested in the nose i would go to this drive through like five six seven times i'm like do i have it do i have it do i have it i get acid reflux i'm like is there? you know i'm like i don't know <laughs> well, every time, every time i would cough or my son would cough yeah. or any of yeah. us would sneeze my mom would be like you need to take a test right. you might have all, COVID. you need to take a test right now <laughs> all we needed was all we needed was someone just it was just a horrible time, but I, I, I did some live streams. It ended up that I don't like streaming very much. I love the live element. I love people being there. So, I, it, it, you know, I didn't make much money doing it, but I made a little something and it helped, you know? Yeah, so, yeah a lot of the bands that we know and people that we've had on the show say the same thing. Like, it's not really the same as stream. It's neat to keep people amused. Like, we do it here, and, and I enjoy this because we used to be just audio. And that sucks because right. you can't really get a feel for the show. And that's great for right. us, but for entertainers who – like your entire persona moves the crowd. 
your right. entire attitude moves the crowd. Right. It's got to be a bitch. Like all the bands are like, dude, it sucked. So it sucked. You know, the Poisson Rouge on Bleecker Street, they went all into it whole hog and they were having bands and live streaming. They're just like, God, this sucks. <laughs> Have you had it, to it deal just... with any trolls or like anybody like really coming at you? Well, I had already, when the pandemic started, I had already been through something that was as trollish as you can imagine. Um, there was a little issue on the the work front with some people, and they uh, they did their best to drag me through the tweets. Um, so I was already, but no, I didn't, luckily I didn't have anybody hopping in and doing anything stupid. And there were some that did, had a lot, a lot of views, but um, um, yeah, it was just such a crazy time. I'm so grateful for my, my wife kids my in-laws my everybody like you know like family is everything you know and you know i don't know i'm just very lucky i think like kind of like to ali's point as well like people are out now and yeah. everything's like doubled because the excitement of being out after that is incredible do you notice it seems like the parties get heavier and people are really like letting it all hang out um <laughs> Sort of metered. It's sort of like a cautious. They probably can't uh, afford to because everything went up in price so much. Inflation, yeah. yeah, but but so so it, there are different sets that go out at night, right? So you have your young white privileged set. What pandemic? Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> they didn't yeah, stop exactly. going out at all. They just they would go to underground <laughs> dance parties and just breathe and lick each other in the fucking teeth and <laughs> you know set up kissing booths and it was like nothing. And then there are you know people brown and black and people of color who are you know, not only a little more, not as for the most part, but aren't as privileged, obviously, for the most part, but but um, they're also suspect of, of, of vaccinations because of the history of this country and vaccinations, how they experimented on people of color. Um, so it's sort of weird. Like there were moments when everything was, whoa, bonkers. Like I was getting tons of gigs, right? But the public, the private gigs were just came on mass, but the public gigs were funny because and this is across the live music board whether you're live nation or, or herbert holler you know it just it wasn't the same uh, a lot of the ticket sales people wouldn't show up um a lot of the con if you ever see an artist say we're going to reschedule due to it's because they're not selling tickets right <laughs> you know there's like there's something that came up the baby is is rescheduling because uh there's a problem no, there's no problem it's just you're not selling tickets right yeah so it's, that's it's, the problem <laughs> you know bruce springsteen is still killing i mean i think he's charging 600 dollars a freaking ticket right yes now. He's, yeah he's killing it he's killing and it selling you know? out. that's unbelievable yeah i mean god bless him but you know and, and your your larger acts are you're probably all right but then everyone else is sort of just scrambling to figure out what's up so one one of the things that definitely did happen there was, there was a shit ton of outdoor events like yeah. a zillion my first party back was in Brooklyn Bridge Park, and that was in, probably so hyped too. In, in, in twelve hours, there was twenty five hundred RSVPs. Yep. Wow! And we had to turn people away. I think wow. it was in seven hours. It was just insane. Everyone was like, "Oh my god!" You know. And then I went, "Okay, we're ready to go back in the club," and because New York allowed us to go in the clubs, I'm like, "Let's go!" And they're like. Oh, uh, you, you go ahead. I think that was one of the things I missed <laughs> the most during the pandemic was live music and just yeah. 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 going to concerts and going and just being around people yeah. with music. You got to be around people. There's that interaction, that physical interaction that you need. That's why I don't care what Meta does. I don't care what streaming does. Cool, but it, none of those things will ever replace, you know, being in a room with someone, being next to someone, feeling that person's energy and that warmth. I think that's that's everything. I agree fully. We used to awesome. have a studio we did it in, and the studio was great. We, I mean, it's mostly local acts, but it was just great getting there and, and just talking to them beforehand and getting on there on, on a little stage and sitting there and just letting it rip. It, there is definitely something better about the human interaction. That's why yeah. I said when we did audio, it was fun, but in essence, it kind of sucked. You couldn't even see a facial reaction. You had right. nothing. And then we yeah, you right. want to see party. the person when they're talking. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yep. So so what's next? I mean, you got a lot, like I said, a lot of great parties. You got the seventeenth at Showboat in Atlantic City. You got this weekend in Philly, and you're always out and about. Uh is there like a super event lining up? Is there a goal? Is there something you really want to accomplish? Um I, I, what I want to accomplish is not thinking about the future. 
because Love I get it. so lost in that and that builds the anxiety. Perfect answer. Yeah, yeah perfect. So, <laughs> I, I try not to um, really think about what, because I'm 46 and I'm DJing like a motherfucker. Like, yeah. you know, it's a lot. You know, I'm working all week and like, I'm, I, I focus too much on what am I going to do when I'm 50 and 55. And it's like, it's, 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 you know, right now everything is great. There is a big event on the horizon. I got to think about the 20th anniversary of Freedom Party. Ooh, gotta think okay. of the that's exciting. One one thousandth party, you know that's 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 crazy. But if I think too much about it, then I get all stressed. Like holy shit! Any I'm big ideas party. that you can say that you're thinking? I, I'm hoping to open the bar up the whole night. <laughs> you heard <laughs> if, I can get the, if I can get the right what? sponsorship, then I can open the bar up the whole night. Um, I'm hoping to get two performances that that are really special. I don't want to talk about who it is, uh, but. One from the hip hop community messy. and one from the R and B community. That I just I'm wow. so excited that that can make that happen. Get guest DJs. Um, but I'm what I'm really hoping for. I'm going to make it a combined birthday party because my birthday party is around the same time in January. What I'm really hoping to happen is that I can sit back and enjoy it and really just soak it in, you know, and, and, and remove myself from the event just enough to like stop for a second and be like, holy shit, this is happening. This is amazing, yeah. you know, because. You get so wrapped up in everything except where you are right now. This 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 thing up here, and I got a lot of space up here, as you can see. <laughs> Same, like, I'm there. It's just, it's just it, you know, it's just it's too much going on, you know. So you 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 always try to reconnect to the physical, and and I hope that's what happens for this event. Um, other than that, I hope I just find ways to work less and make more. There that's you go. It. Yeah. I find that when I'm not doing stuff, like I always say, I'm like, oh, I need a break. I need a break. And, and you like, have a break oh, and you can't sit still. My, yeah, my <laughs> mom will give me a break and she'll yeah. like help me out for the night and take my son overnight. And I'm like, I miss him. Like, I don't right, know. What, what am I do doing? Like yeah. Like, yeah. It's you really know, I, quiet I, in the house. I, the other thing that's on the horizon is I wrote a book over the pandemic about my oh, life, wow. how I became a DJ going from like, an overweight, neurotic, Jewish kid who was super shy, virgin, to being a DJ, and not a virgin, I guess. <laughs> That's the good news. <laughs> but 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 um, it's it's all about it. it's embarrassing and self deprecating and sad and just it's gonna be a oh. bestseller. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I like the thing is like so. All the elements, all the elements are there for a great book, but. <laughs> But like, I don't want to have to self-publish. Like, and that's the thing. I want, like, gosh, I've been selling something forever. I'm so sick of it. I want someone to swoop down from like literary heaven, an angel, and be like, "Your book is wonderful. We're gonna, you know, <laughs> put it on every shelf in the world, and you're gonna be a best-selling author, and you have a TV show, and then your gigs are gonna go adding zeros and more zeros to them. That's what I want. But you know, we'll see what we'll see what the universe has in store for me. I don't know. But the best of luck in it. The stories Thank you tell you. are great, and it's, you're Thank funny you. on top of entertaining, and you thanks, definitely thanks. get a crowd going. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on. We'd love to invite you back. It's been very entertaining. We're already like 40 minutes in. We usually do 30. Ooh. But um, everybody, find DJ Herbert Howard, www.herberthowler.com, Instagram and Facebook. You can find him, Herbert Howard. And Instagram. Don't worry about the Freedom Party, NYC. Yeah, don't worry about that. Right, Herbert yeah. Howard, Herbert yeah, Howard, Herbert Right. And of course, <laughs> Freedom Party in New York City. And of course, Herbert Howard. Herbert, I can't thank you enough for coming on. You were fantastic. You. The time flew by. There were so many interesting, interesting things to talk about. And Make we, sure uh, you got one of those huge hurricanes from the showboat. Yes. When you're there. And he loves Wawa. You're always oh. good after one of those. Those hurricanes, <laughs> they always make them so strong. Oh, God. I used to just go to the showboat just to get one of those. <laughs> But remember, if you're finding your way on the East Coast, Saturday, September 17th, the Showboats Sandlot. It's just a great place. Uh, off the Hook Music and Seafood Festival. You can see Herbert Hauer. And the night before music. on the Mishulu in Philly. Definitely. Mishulu in Philly. That is one of the greatest places to absolutely party. It's one of the best places in town. I'm, I'm hyped. I'm ready for tonight, man. You gotta, We got to do like a Yo Show Herbert Hauer event where we're just freaking mixing tunes. That'd be awesome. Islands in the stream. That is that what is we what are. We, uh, <laughs> we can take it to any level here. We absolutely love it. Herbert, right. thank you very much for coming on. We uh, hope you. to have you on again because this was awesome, man. Have yourself a great night and good luck this weekend. 
Thank you so much. Bye bye, guys. So nice bye -bye. meeting you. Yeah, Likewise. Be thank well. you. Be well. Thank you. Bye -bye. Absolutely a treat. Uh, Herbert he Howard. So nice. Right. Super cool. And the thing we love, Allie, and I know you're kind of new to the program, and I know you've seen it before, and you're new to the program, and you're new to the interviewing process, et cetera. But what we get is just the best freaking guests because they want to come on and talk about themselves. They're not worried about a whole lot else. And I love that because we want to know what goes on in, in here and in here. I'm not worried about what goes on around them, like what are they're being told and fed. I like to know what comes out of their mind, what comes out of their mouth, what comes out of their gut. What got them started. Right. And that's, I mean, it's one of the reasons, like, when people say to me, like, how did you find this person to co-host, that person to co-host, yourself included? It's just people who want to be seen right. and heard. You know, yeah, it's nice to be seen. Um, I'm gorgeous. I know it. You're gorgeous. You know it. But to be seen and heard is cool and have people like watch you. And even if they come in and out and even like the next day, your friends are like, yeah, I caught it. Pretty cool. Just the support. Like, right. it, it's unbelievable. Even with Facebook, like the support that I've gotten through the years, just it's amazing. Did you That's ever, awesome. you ever imagine when you were a young kid? I know it's hard to think back. I do it sometimes. When you're a young kid. Did you ever I'm still really young? Well, you're young. You're a lot younger than me. But did you ever think that there would be this outlet where your friends, if you couldn't get in touch with friends for days, weeks, whatever, they'd still be able to find you, send you some love, make you laugh? It says, could you like, did you ever dream of something like this happening? Not when I was little, but I've been on MySpace like since it My was on. Like. My friend and I were just talking about it. It's been like, I'm almost, I, I don't even want to say it, but almost 20 years on social media. Yeah. And before that I was on AOL and like AOL. all the different things. Like I've been on social media for so long. It's, so, it's, uh, it's kind of cool to see how it's grown though. Right. And how it's changed and developed. I agree with that. I mean, I feel like I've been doing TikToks my whole life. Wow. You're right. It's what? just, they 18? weren't cool then. 19? Yeah. Exactly. But they weren't like cool then. Like it was a different thing. Like everyone's like, oh, what are you doing? Making weird little videos of you doing weird stuff and putting things across it. I was making TikToks before it was TikTok. <laughs> I kind of, I pretty much know your age and I'm telling you, I would never say it on air. People wouldn't believe it anyway. Uh, my son tells everybody and everything anyway. I, I am it. actually 39 years old. Wow. I will be 40 in February. You should go to Nashville like we did. What a freaking event. But yeah. Age I would is love different to now. Nashville. Oh my God. I'm telling you, you, I've seen how you like to throw down a little bit and get into it. It is nonstop. The streets are flooded with people who are falling over each other. I went when I was younger and I know how like hype it was. And like, it was amazing. Even as a kid being there with just all the lights and just everything. And I got to stay in the grand old Opry hotel and that was just amazing. They had birds flying around. It was just a whole experience, but I would love to go now that I can drink. Right. That's where it's at. It is a gigantic. And I mean, it's the most, Right. But it's also, and I mean this in the sweetest way, is the biggest shit show you'll ever see. There was, when I tell you, and please, my wife knows, I know, etc. We look at people and there's attractive people. There was more pretty girls falling over themselves and dropping stone face drunk in the middle of the street than you could ever imagine. But it's almost like accepted. It's almost like, okay, you're doing Nashville. <laughs> I heard the boots there. Like I heard the. There's nothing like Nashville boots. Dude. Like you can walk into shops and you can get like three for a hundred and fifty dollars, and they're like amazing and not like anything else. Are you gonna whip out boots? Yeah, I am. Maybe <laughs> whip out. Never say whip out to a guy, especially live on air. No, I picked up this little piece and I didn't get to wear it last night. 
I wear it tonight. I wear my, my cowboy hat. I got this in Nashville, you know. It's like red, white, and blue. It's like American flag. And it looks very Kid Rockish. Thank you. And that's kind of the vibe. And I'm there and I'm like, let me put my hat bag on. That was a really good choice because when you think about it, you've got Fourth of July. Great right. for the flag. You've got Memorial Day. You got Labor Day. I love getting stuff with flags because it just covers a lot of bases. It's funny because I was chasing around this. There was this nice regular black cowboy hat, and I'm like, oh, I love this. And it was like thirty bucks, so it was cheap, but it was nice. And I went back the next day, and I couldn't find it. And Cassie's like, wow, look at that one. And I mean, if she didn't nail, like I said, it's America, which I love. It's the flag. Like I said, the holidays, I can wear it. I'm trying to keep it neat, though. I don't want to ruin it because I tend to sweat a little bit. But, uh, yeah, like the, you get a natural, like I said, between the boots and the hats and the clothing. It, it's a scene. It really is. Amazing scene. But it's a scene. Yeah, I see all these girls doing TikToks and they've got like bright pink cowboy boots on and they're doing, I cannot country line dance. I tried to do it once with, um, one of my girlfriends and I, I, I think we almost gave the guy a heart attack. <laughs> Why is that like, exactly? You don't, you don't move like that. Like uh, it's, cause yeah. it's very straight. I don't know. It just, we had a very hard time doing it. I get you. I, I mean, I, I appreciate your. Plus all the songs that I like are like a hundred steps. Right. Like, I, I don't want to do the ones that are only, like, five steps. They're not good songs, but... Right, I'm not really, like I said, any kind of line dancing, choreographed dancing, anything of that nature is not my thing. I, I'm i just not a good dancer. Hey, at least you can accept it. Yeah, I can headbang, I can mosh, I cannot dance. So, we mentioned this earlier. We were going to talk about this last night, and we didn't. I had the shirt on. Um... I don't know how big a fan you are, if you're not a fan or a follower. Everybody everybody in this world is either a fan or a follower of Britney Spears. And she came out the other day and says, that's it. I am never performing again. All the trauma I've been through, all this nonsense in my life, I don't feel that I can ever perform again. I think she'll take a break. But just like we were just talking about, like when you're used to chaotic and crazy and being like, I mean, she's Britney Spears. I couldn't even imagine. And that's what I'm kind of saying. Like the, the question I was going to come at you with, do you think it's more or less just some hype like disappear for even the God, even like five years and then one day pop back up. Could you know the kind of fucking tickets it's going to sell if she disappears? I don't feel forever? like she can stay away forever. I think that she does probably need a break. I'm sure it's very overwhelming being Britney Spears. Sure. Always, even still to this day, like there hasn't been new music in years. And the last time she did anything music wise. She is. Right. And I mean, she can post the weirdest things on Instagram and TikTok and these people, like the love and support that she gets, it's just unbelievable. Another yeah, like one that I'm usually there for the comments. Agreed. I'm like sitting there, like with my cheese puffs, like yeah. <laughs> Let's see what you got because Instagram and she was always prudish, sweet little Britney. Now she's holding her naked boobs. She's got her ass hanging out. And I gotta tell you, I don't think she was even posting for herself. I mean, all these people had all those things going on, like wear pink if you're in trouble. I th I think somebody else was posting to her site. It was like, probably, I don't even think she had control of it. It's probably the fiance. No, I don't like that guy. I don't trust that guy. He seems shady. I don't know. Like, I kind of felt that way too. But, I mean, he's the best out of the ones that she's had. <sighs> That's not saying a damn thing. No. Not, but, I mean, like, at least she's, like, moving up. I don't know. I buy that. Okay. Moving up. I get it. I, you know, it's just, there's still after all the shit she's been through and the drug rumors and the shaved head and the going crazy and all this, there's still this mystique among most, most men. And I'm just as guilty 
that there is still this sweet little girl walking down the school with, hallway in the plaited skirt that you know is a sweet young lady and her wearing the snake the snake is so see this is where girls and guys like i think automatically to toxic and the snake like i don't even think of the school girl like that would be more of like a Halloween costume that I would do. But like <laughs> when I think of Britney Spears, I think of that toxic, that red outfit. Oh, that's fire. Mm. Fire. That skin tight one piece red thing. I mean. Yeah, she's just a wow. force. She is. She is. And, and and she's still hot and people are like, ah, she looks so run down. Are you kidding me? That like she's just the force, the aura, the what she is makes her hot. But I definitely don't think that she can stay away forever. I definitely feel she'll be back. I agree with that. And hopefully it happens. And hopefully it's, you know, like I said, not soon. Give it a few years. I mean, I'll be. She's had her whole me. life, like, dictated for her for so long that she deserves to at least have a little time to just learn how to be a normal person again. Right. And that's, I can't even imagine the peril. I mean, I do this show and I know people flood me in the supermarket for autographs and <laughs> no, but anyway, like you can't imagine that you have, like you said, your life is not your own. Your life belongs to the entire freaking world. Every movie you make. I I'm sure there's at least a thousand people that think that they are dating Britney Spears, even with her married. Like people are obsessed with her. They yeah. are obsessed. I mean, she's, Messes me on Instagram a lot to go out on dates. It's just not the right time. Brittany, if Stop you're it. out there watching, back back off a little bit, please. We'll have our moment. <laughs> Who would you... Now, it's funny, because I always talk about Brittany Spears. And I don't know if that's my answer, but you could date one celebrity. And I want to hear yours, because you're a little bit off the cuff. You're not cookie cutter. Where most girls would go, oh, I think Ryan Gosling's so cute. Yes, yeah, great. He's got the big blonde hair and the blue eyes. That's wonderful. But somebody with a little more like a, a unique palette of taste, like yourself, lay one on me or two on me. Okay. I definitely, definitely would say um, Charlie Hunnan. He was Jax Teller. Oh, in my God. Anarchy. Yeah. Like yes. he is so beautiful and um uh, <laughs> uh wow. Um another one would be Travis Mills. I don't know why, but <laughs> I'm just really attracted to him. And I believe he's single, so if you see this, Travis, hit me up. <laughs> Answer it's over. Um share it. Hashtag Travis Mills. Oh, definitely. I you do that on the day. No, <laughs> You never know. Like mine is uh, like, again, cookie cutter, blonde, this and cookie cutter, that for me, like, yeah, Brittany, but Christina Ricci has always been like my oh, wow. Yeah, she's, she's a girl cross. She's so different. And so I don't give a shit. And, and she was so, Wednesday Adams. And she's Wednesday Adams. And she's hot. Like her, her whole delivery about her is hot. Like she's not out there trying to always be hot. But if you don't think she's hot, fuck you. <laughs> you know? Yeah, basically. I get that. Um, and another a weird one that everybody laughs at, and I gotta say it because I know I can share this with you, and you might laugh. Kelly Clarkson. I I I'm madly in love. I, I for some it. reason felt like you were gonna say Taylor Swift. No, oh, I no? can't stand. No, I can't stand Taylor Swift. Not at all. Okay. When you were Not saying blonde and going with that whole vibe, I, I thought Christina Aguilera or Taylor Swift was coming out. <laughs> I used to think Christina Aguilera was super hot. Like that was definitely a crush of mine. And she still looks good, but there is something in, in my wife laughs, my buddies laugh, like Kelly Clarkson, like why? her talk is great. I think she's great. I find her to yeah. be so cute and like I'm not afraid of pounds. That doesn't bother me. So, oh, she's heavy. That does not bother me. To me, it's all about the pretty face, the personality. Um, oh, money. yeah. I definitely, um, money doesn't since, hurt. <laughs> since her whole talk show, I definitely tune in now and again. Yeah. I, I, I can't usually catch it because it's like in the middle of the day, but. I feel you. I, every now and again, I do. I, sh I shot, I 
I shot my shot. Everyone says, shoot your shot. And I found this um, PR firm that works for her in an email. And I send an email. Like, I do this little show. And I know it's way beneath Kelly. But if she ever could. And they responded. They said, thank you for being a fan. We appreciate it. Kelly's schedule was just way too busy. But we appreciate you reaching out. Just that alone. I was like, oh. Like Scarlett wow. Johansson. Her people re reached out and sent me this beautiful email about thank you for being a fan of Scarlett. We appreciate you thinking about her and insane. Right. I'm trying to get that, <laughs> trying to get that one insane guest. Like we've had some great ones. We definitely have. I've had some great Lady ones. Gaga. You Lady know, Gaga. I stick it out to everybody. I will lay it out to anybody. And people say, yeah, you'll never get that. They're yeah, probably not, but. You never know. You might get that one person. Says, no, hey, unless you try. Right. You might get that one person. Says, hey, let's give this guy's show a shot and a little push and see what happens. It usually works out when I, at least when I do it, it usually works out for the best. I like that. I'm, I'm putting that in my bank. And hang I feel on. like if you put it out in the universe, then. Hey, you never know. That. Um, Like I said, like we've had, um, Steve Howie from Shameless, who played Big Kev, and he was on Reba. And that was a shot I took because I think he's freaking awesome. And when I got the okay and his PR people said, yeah, he's he's not asked to do this much, so he would love it. I'm going to go on Cloud 9. And he's super cool. He was funny. He did it three times for us, twice uh, as the O Show, and once back when I did the old program. You just, if you don't ask... You never know. Um, two and a Half Men, Jennifer Taylor, who played Chelsea, Charlie's girlfriend on Two and a Half Men, reached out to her people, and her people said, you know, she never gets asked to, to do interviews. Let's see what she says. And she went back to PR people and said, yeah, let me do an interview. Let it be about me for a change. Let's do it. And she talked about, like, real life and just how her day was. And, people, too. Yeah. I mean, like, I remember when I was doing this promotional thing with uh, Damon Feldman and all them, and I got to meet uh, Screech, Dustin Diamond. Yeah. Such <laughs> a nice guy. I mean, it, it, he was so down to earth, so chill. I, it, it, just awesome. I mean, we sat there for a good portion of the night just shooting the shit. Can I ask you an honest question? Sure. And you can say yes, no, or no comment. This this screech try to get in your pants. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Come on now. I swear to God, I thought that that's how he was going to be. Yeah. Going into it, I definitely thought. But no, he's married. He was married. He was a really nice guy. Wow. Very professional. Like he was really cool. That's that's cool. You like hearing that stuff. Um, Every person that like came up and was excited to see him, he shook their hand and he yeah. was very personal. I was actually really surprised because I had kind of I had seen him on Celebrity Fit Club or whatever it is, and <laughs> I I was like, oh no, like he's gonna kind of be a jerk. But yeah, absolutely not. And yeah, it's the same that. thing from like the situation. Like I, when I met him, he was the nicest guy, totally down to earth. So let me ask you a question, honestly. Yes, no, or no comment. Did Mike the situation try to get in your pants? No, he did not. <laughs> no, he didn't. It was before <laughs> it was before he started dating his wife. He was single at the time. No. Oh. But I think there were so many girls that were throwing themselves at him and yeah. he was trying to promote his vodka that I don't think he was really that concerned because that was like a, he he had a crowd lined up. I know how it gets. I understand Mike's situation. I understand like Jeff Perini. Like the ladies just line up. And ladies, please give us some space. Like, come on. <laughs> that yo show fame for you. But um, it's cool. Like, and like I said, you send it out to everybody. Like there's some mid range actors, actors, people you see on TV who have come on the show, and you're like, that's pretty freaking cool, like Jennifer Taylor. And um, Madeline Zima, she was on The Nanny. I don't know if you've ever seen The Nanny, Fran Drescher. She was a little girl. 
And she grew up and she was on Californication and she did a lot of great movies. And she came on and she called me beforehand. I said, look, I don't want to talk about this. I'm going to talk about that. I, I want to keep it, you know, respectful, et cetera. And I'm like, you know, your wish is my command because I'm madly in love with this woman. I think she's gorgeous. But she was so cool. And you're like, man, you watch them on TV. You watch their career. And here they are just shooting the shit with us. Yeah, it's crazy the when they're real people and they're like sitting in front of you. Right. Like, I mean, I just, I can't believe some of them. I mean, I've had ones that have been a little divish, but for the most part, a lot Don't of them are really nice and normal. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of them kind of, uh, they see it as a blessing to be where they are and they want to help and and speak, etc. cetera. Um, I've had some that, aren't even really overly famous. I said, yeah, we'll do your show. We get paid XXX. Like you get paid. I don't even get paid. How the fuck are you getting paid? If I'm not getting paid. <laughs> Everybody Allie. wants money for everything. Exactly. Allie only gets 300 an episode. <laughs> don't tell Jewel. Jewel's never collected a diamond. In life. But no, we, we don't. We're, you know, it'd be nice to get to that point where somebody says, Hey, let me advertise on you or come to our place. And some of the sites give a little kickback for whatever it is. It's pennies on the dollar. You know, just somebody runs an ad that sees your show, et cetera. I would love to get the phone line and have people be able to call in. Well, here's what happened with that. And this is why we got away from that a little bit. Quick story. We used to do the show just audio on a site called Blog Talk Radio. And I had a call in line built into... Um, a soundboard, if you're a computer soundboard. Mm -hmm. So we had, <laughs> we were talking about Jerry Lewis and we're going on and the phone rings. I'm like, okay, we have a caller. Caller, you're on the O show. He's like, hi, thanks for having me. Uh, kind of had a story to share, the kind of celebrity run in with Jerry Lewis. I'm like, you know, I'm, I feel like an ass telling a story. I'm like, great, go ahead. And he's like, yeah, Jerry used to come over to my house. He was friends with my family. And then one time it was just me and him. And he reached around, and he grabbed my dick and pulled my pants down and stuck it in my ass. I clicked the guy off. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> I'm telling, like, you give certain people the ability to get on the air with you unfiltered. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I, yeah, I know people that do that actually. Right. I know I people like, that do that randomly that just for fun, they just like the people that will be on TV that, give the phone number. I know people that call those numbers repetitively yeah. and I ask them for stupid things that when they really want a donation. Yeah. I was like, I was floored. I'm like, you didn't, I got the hiccups also from all this beer, but you didn't expect it. So it caught me so uh, off guard. I, a trick that my grandmother taught me. Hit me Take with a, a trick. glass of water. Oh, get a glass of water and take 10 sips <laughs> in a row. I can, I'm getting a glass of water. I'm going to hiccup through the rest of the show. Is this the same grandmother you stole money from during Monopoly? I knew that was going to come up. It was <laughs> money. So if you didn't tune in last night, first of all, you can watch the replay of every single show we do. Yeah, um, I admitted that I stole Monopoly money from my grandmother. <laughs> the Super Radio yeah. Network, YouTube, Twitch. Oh, Allie admitted that she robbed her grandma in Monopoly. I did it. The game went way too long. She stole, cheated, and still couldn't put grandma away. Props she to took grandma. off the bank. <laughs> She went for coffee. It was fine. She knew, though. It's all good. She knew. She knew. Yeah, but I'm not saying it's, like, diabolical. Like, I know Allie's got... You could tell she's got a little bit of that evil side. And then she'd always about. make me, like, this really good treat for, like, doing so good at the game. For cheating. You're a good little girl. <laughs> what color was your hair back then? Um, Probably, like... Dark brown, almost Dark black. Brown. So for the people who weren't on last night, give us that little puller like it did last night. Show them the range of color. Because I, I tell you, that's freaking awesome. It's like orange, red. I have, yeah, this is my, actually, I just threw magenta on it. 
So yeah. it's got purple and then magenta thrown over it. And then the front is coral. I dig it. I really do. How do you come up with, we're going to put you on an interview spot now. How do you come up with the ideas or do you just kind of wing it? Um, sometimes I have the ideas. Sometimes I go on Pinterest or Instagram and I'm inspired by something, but usually I end up winging it. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah. It's crazy. Once I get the bleach and I have that like clear palette, you never know. So now when you bleach it, what does it come out like? Is it just like a flat blonde to work with or how does it come out? Like I know my wife does it a lot and I never really watch. I always wait for the after product. Um, Actually, well, when I first did it, I went from the Corella half and half. I had half purple, half blonde. Um, I had colored the one side purple and then I matched both of them at the same shade of like the magenta. Yeah. And then I went back and added the orange and lightened. It was a whole process. It actually took me almost two days. Well, wow. two days. Cause I, yeah. Because I had to do all the extensions and life happens in between like my son wants a snack or wants food or wants <laughs> to go somewhere five below and go grab a toy that he's seen on the internet. I don't know, but yeah, I had to stop a bunch of times. He's really good about it though. That's like good. Jackson's like, mom, my mom's doing her hair. Cause he wants the purple. He like, he is very adamant that I keep the purple in my hair. I like it. I like the purple. I like all the colors. You do a great job. You really do. A lot um, of people recently have been telling me, they're like, will you please go back to all purple? I probably will. Just not yet. I'm really enjoying the whole orange purple vibe. I like the mix. We've had some like uh, heavy metal artists that have come on the show, female singers. Uh, Lena Scissorhands has kind of that orangey that you have on top. And, um, Mixie Demner does like blues and greens. And I think it's freaking cool. Like times have changed, man. They really have my favorite. And I'll share this with you. And I don't know if you're familiar with the band or the artist. It's Ash Costello. She's the lead singer of new year's day. And she does that flaming red and black. But I, I just think that half and half. is super Yeah, cool. that's gorgeous. She's also beautiful and she's a tremendous singer, but I've always loved that kind of look. And I love the half and half look. I loved rocking it. It just, it, I, it was great. But I don't know. The only thing that really threw me off is I don't always like to wear a straight down the middle part. Right. I get that. And I think that was my problem. Like, I know all these youngins are like, oh, you know, you got to wear it straight down the middle. But I like my side part every now and again. I just, I don't like keeping it very straight like that, but. Or right. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, and we had this young lady on our show. I'll show you one more. I get obsessed with this hair stuff. I freaking love it. And you know, when you're bald, you tend to love hair that much more. It's uh, funny. You, Cause my, my friend sits here and he just like watches me in amazement when I'm dying my hair or he is sometimes with my makeup looks like, He'll give me ideas and I'll sit here and create them. And he's like, you just did that in like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. So this young lady, another singer named Alex. Now she does a purple and green. I love that. And That's... I really wanted to do that. But my whole family was like bullying me about it. Really? I did do the money, the money pieces and the front green for a little bit. Yeah, they all were harassing about it, that I'd be jokerish and that it wasn't appropriate for my son to go to school. But, I mean, I didn't fully listen because, I mean, I did do bright orange. But <laughs> it's just a color. At some point, I feel like I will do green and, like, do the half and half or at least do the, like, money pieces, like, but thicker. What is it? Uh, what is a money piece? Money pieces are these pieces. They're like the front pieces, like the oh, okay. bangs and like that. So Just it's to like, give it a little flair. Right. Kind of like the king of the head, I guess. So it's like the most important pieces. I don't know. They get a new name like every couple of years. So 
It's the same with balayage. Everybody goes on about balayage. I'm like, yeah, you're just simply painting it on your head, but yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but I love but it. A fancy name. I mean, it's all good. I get obsessed with, you know, and part of the reason I love doing this show, I get obsessed with uniqueness, the hair and, and tattoos and clothing. And I get obsessed with it. Like a lot of times I'm very ordinary in my routine. I used to be very different. Like there was a time I actually shaved half my face. It was like the kookiest thing ever. I woke up one morning, shaved half my face. It wasn't as thick, it was lighter, but just, you know, just to do something a little different. How'd that go? Not good. <laughs> a lot of people said it looked absolutely ridiculous. Like, you know, you gave it a shot and there it was. I will never forget back in um, junior high school. I thought I could really rock anything. I, I was emo and I was like, yeah. I'm going to rock this army outfit with these bright yellow leggings. And I was like, I'm going to rock this with my Doc Martens. Doc Martens. I thought I looked great. <laughs> I, was, I, 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 I had the confidence. I, I seriously walked into school thinking that everybody was going to compliment my outfit. I'm telling you, every friend of mine made fun of it. I got called Commander <laughs> Bumblebee. All sorts of names all day long. And I'm like, yeah, I really, really just missed the mark on that one. But my mom used to like torture me when I was younger. I love her to pieces and she's like my best friend. But her fashion sense when I was younger was like awful. She would put me in vest with like cowboy boots on them. Oh, and, the like, things your parents did. Oh my skirts God. Skirts with like, uh, oh, it was just awful. The limited two, she like lived at the limited two. I had every outfit in every color. <laughs> Imagine growing up with like a sibling who was like a little more than a year older than you. My mother you used to match us. No, she matched us in everything. Every outfit matched. Every app. My brother's like, I, I hate this shit. I don't want to look like you. I don't. And every when you're like from five to like 10 when years you're old. an only child you really want like a sibling that you can match with but when yeah. you have one you don't want it right my brother hated it to death and now like we get along like best friends we have different styles on everything but back then he's like i hate that he would actually throw fits and and get mad and mom would put us like in the 70s like pimp outfits with big hats and he would throw his hat off and yeah like Parents had no fashion. They tried putting their kids in what was hip when they were younger. No, don't it do was that. so bad. I'm telling you, the second that I could like have my own like fashion freedom, I just never looked back. I, I threw agree. that vest out and I never looked back. <laughs> <laughs> so long vest. It was the same way, like when in like fourth grade, like my mom used to put out a shirt and go oh, wear this to school. So one day there was like this flower. It looked like a blouse. It had flowers all over it. I don't even think it buttoned on the right side. I swore it was a women's shirt. And I'm like, no. And I left it on the floor and I threw on a football jersey and I went to school and the rest was history. She said, what's wrong with that shirt? I'm like, no, you're done. No, uh-uh. Well, never my again. My mom always goes on about that. She's like, your father and some of his shirts, like he's got one no joke. It looks like a screen door. It looks like you're looking at a screen door and it's got the Echo One all what? over it. it. It looks like the Echo One. It's not the Echo One. Like it could be the Christmas vacation vehicle, like either <laughs> one. But it looks like you're looking at a screen door with ferns <laughs> and the Echo One. I'm like, Dad, where did you even get this? Like, is this specially ordered? Like, what? But my mom like complains about his clothing. I'm like, he wouldn't notice if it disappeared. Right. Like he would not notice if that shirt disappeared and like some new ones from Kohl's just like slipped in the mix. I don't know. Maybe that's why I'm not married because I'd be getting rid of ugly shirts, but I whatever. She, I would yeah. replace them. I would replace them with better ones. I don't <laughs> really, she doesn't throw out ugly shirts, but I could tell when there's a shirt in rotation that doesn't work for her. You kind of know. Yeah. And, you know, um, you've known her for a while and she doesn't really hold back if something isn't working for her. 
And it starts out with, oh, you look nice. Kind of. Not great. You kind of don't match. I don't know if I'd really do that shirt with anything else you have on. In other words, take the fucking shirt off. I get it. You know. <laughs> you should just start taking it off as soon as she comments the first time. Right. First time, you look nice. Okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's coming off. What shirt do you want me to wear? Exactly. Are you a um I know different girls get into it. I know I get into it, which people find weird. Are you a shopping fiend? Do you love to go out and shop and, and buy new shit for yourself? Yes, but I hate them all. Like I am okay. more of like a thrift store person. I love going to thrift stores and finding like something vintage that nobody else has that I can kind of like recreate. I like that. But I do also have a shopping addiction. I mean, I love Amazon. I love Poshmark and Sheen and all them. I mean, yeah. I was my, a, friend, um, my friends are all sitting there like, yes, yeah, she has a shopping yeah. addiction. <laughs> I was a weekend warrior <laughs> at you shaking your head from here. <laughs> I was a weekend warrior at the mall. I used I mean, Franklin Mills, because they had a lot of different, like bigger stores of a lot of That's variety where I got, for men. I got a fake ID when I was younger yeah. from Franklin Mills. Yeah, the ID place. Me and my girlfriend just walked yeah. right in, got the ID, went right down to Egypt. Yep, Egypt. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah. How old? How old were you in Egypt? I was fifteen. <laughs> wow. Don't tell them. <laughs> no, I mean, they're long gone now. I just like had the fear. And it's funny because a lot of those people are still in the mix, though. Oh, sure. But... The thing is funny, like you would go to these places and my buddies are like, oh, we're not talking to any girls. I'm like, dude, half of these girls might be 16. And oh, yeah. Yeah. We definitely. But we look the part. Sure. I mean, absolutely. my girlfriend and I, we would go all out. I mean, we looked 18. No, I'm just <laughs> we looked 13. Yeah. <laughs> we like did the 18, the 18 and under clubs too. I mean, there were a couple of those. Oh yeah. There was a uh, club fizz. There was popcorn. I mean, um, shampoo. shampoo, shampoo was always their phone parties. I mean, yeah. Who doesn't some, like having phone? Some, all of used them. To, some of them used to have the rope. Like you, the old flat spin 94th Air Squadron, they would do the mix with overage, underage, and they would put this rope. And I'm like, really? And all the young girls, she's always that pressed rope on didn't the rope. do shit. No, it didn't. All the young girls, she always pressed on the rope, dying to get over. And all the guys would sneak them under. Let's face it, the, the girls got in. The poor young dudes would sit there like dorks because nobody worried about them. But the young girls found their way. I feel like Egypt had the same like 10 guys standing outside that never got in. Like, where are you now? Plants. They're probably still waiting in line. Ah. <laughs> you know, I, and I learned money talks to get in sometimes. Like, yeah, um, used to be Deco and Delaware Ave. That was the after hour spot. And, I went a couple of times, but I by the time I got there, I was pretty good to go. Right, and most people are. And uh, you would get there, and there'd be this giant line, and you're like, fuck this. Each of your buddies you know, pull out a 20, and you all go to the door guy, and you mention some kind of name, and you're like, I go through. You get the girl at the door 20, and you're in. Waiting in line is like, no, why? We go waiting in line. It's an after hour club. We're rooting for like an hour and a half. You're going to wait in line for an hour to get in for a half hour? Well, I used to get, like, um, what is it? Z bar or C bar, Z which I, right. Z bar, I believe yeah. it was. I don't know. One was in Harris that was called C bar, and one was Z bar. So I used to always get confused, but whatever. Um, the after hours club in Philly, um, I would usually end up going there with the DJ from the club and he would get completely hooked up. He didn't have yeah. to wait in any line. Sure. Everybody wants the DJ go right in. Uh, yeah. You got so, the name, you, you find the right people. Locked out a little bit. That's a good thing. And like I said, I, I used to love to keep the party going to three, four in the morning, but 
when you show up and there's a line of like a hundred people and you're like, yeah, if I'm not getting in the first minute, I'm not bothering. I don't know. I kind of always like acted like someone important, even when I didn't know anybody. And it always kind of worked to my benefit. It works for women better than men. Trust. Yeah, definitely. Trust me. Absolutely. But I Great. do know my one friend, he looks the part, like he's got the platinum blonde hair and just that rock star vibe. And he was the only guy that I ever knew that really could roll with me. Like if I was walking through and just walking into VIP and acting like I was supposed to be there, he was walking with me and we were both getting in. Usually they don't bother you if you look the part. I mean, maybe the venues now, it yeah. was very different going to the pavilion for corn and imagine dragons, like so many security guards, they never yeah. walked through the middle of the field before. No, right do whatever you wanted to in the middle of the field. Speaking of great entertainers, musicians, Irish Ray Coleman in the house. Ray, what is up? Ray hey, is Ray. an awesome singer. Jewel and I have seen him live. Uh, terrific. Uh, some Irish songs, some great folk music. He is a terrific entertainer. Uh, and he's a great friend of the show and, and a guy that definitely is worth seeing. I'll put his name up there again for anybody. Who Thank wants you to so check much him out. for watching. Absolutely. Thanks, Ray, as always. And he's cool in person. We've met him. He's sent us his new CD. Great dude. Love Ray Coleman. Love a lot of the people that come on. I'll tell you what, Allie, I know you're, again, I know you're new to the, doing the show with us, but these Philly artists, man, are fucking great. The support, the community, and the talent. Like this, this Poeta beer, and I'm glad that, you know, that's DJ, so awesome. I'm glad that DJ Herbert gave a, a question there so I could show it. And the drummer is uh, my good man, George. And he came by last night before the show. He's like, hey, man, I got your beer. George Powell, if you're out there and or if you watch on recording. And we met, talked for a few minutes, dropped all the beers. Like, I know you got the show, dude. Go ahead, do your thing, and we'll catch up. And it's just great. There's a lot of – the big thing about the show, a lot of great talent that people – eventually find from watching us or we'll discover from watching us. That's what it's all about. You're exactly right. Great. It is a great crew of musicians who all support each other. Uh, very little. It's not so much competition around here. It's community and people feed off each other and feed off the vibe. And we've been told by the locals, the nationals that what we do here is great because we're worried about, the talent we want to know about the individuals that make the magic happen, not just like now, hey, we're, uh, back, now that we're back to live music, like everybody right. better get out and see these people. Let's exactly. support each other, support local right. bands. Right, we're back. Like, take don't take it for granted where we just were when we couldn't even see. Like, didn't even want you going to a Christmas holiday with your fucking family, let alone going to a bar. Yeah. So let's keep getting out there, man. Let's do it. Like I said, summer is, is ending. So you'll see more people out because the shore kind of goes away and more people come back up. So the fall is really my season. Everybody comes back around. Shows get back around. So uh, it's cool. And Ray says, welcome, Allie. Allie is uh, one of the new members of the Osho family. You'll see her on the 2.0 and sometimes. And maybe some live stuff because a lot of bars and I'll say, hey, let's get out. Bring your show. I'm thinking maybe getting Jewel and Allie and bringing like a whole entourage of people that just do like some kick-ass stuff. We have so many ideas. Just want to make them come true because I love to just sit, talk, entertain the people that watch. I love watching people perform. And Allie, I got to tell you, as we close out here with a couple minutes left on the show, first of all, thank you so much for... Oh, no problem. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. Thank you for finally breaking down. I've been asking you for a while and you finally broke down. So, you know, we give this schmuck a shot and uh, <laughs> you've been great. Like your conversation is great and your insights. Well, the are two hour food. time slot is very intimidating, especially when you have a child. I got so. that. And I give you credit again for, for really conquering that tonight. Like you went through it with a buzz. So like it didn't even come last night. He's you asked awesome. a few times. My son is totally supporting me. He is all about me doing the podcast and everything. So that's great. I'm lucky we, to have 
the support system I have. And I got to tell you, honestly, between myself, Jewel, you, uh, other people have helped me do the show, like Angela, uh, Tina Marie Celine, who is in Texas, another great podcaster. I just wish I can get to the point where the show's so big that I could do me and all of you just hanging out and maybe even sitting in the same studio, like me and eight of you just talking and shooting we'll the get shit. There. And- we'll get there. We'll get there. We I believe the pandemic. We'll get there. Yeah, exactly. I fully believe in that. Uh, so we're getting ready to close now. Tell all your friends. Watch right. Tell show. all your friends. Watch the Yo Show. And I found something neat today. And I, I'm thinking about trying this. So the car dealership I work at, I work in the service area. The girl brings her car in. And I noticed her front license plate was a picture of her. And it had her Instagram right on it. That is genius. Is that freaking brilliant? Like, you know what? That, is, that, she's smart. And it was funny because my manager said something about, oh, Instagram. Like, what made you say that? He says, look at the front of the car. And I'm like, that's really long, though. I don't know if you would be able to read it. Yeah, maybe not. Hers was a little shorter. But then again, it was all, I was just like blown away. I'm like, dude, just get like a front bumper license plate. Maybe a side thing that says the Yo Show, and people are like, "What the hell is that?" My friend does car wraps. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got a little itch. <laughs> Yo, show it up. Right, we're working on a new uh, logo. That's why the old school Jeez, Yo. If you're watching, right yeah, man, or if you watch uh, on uh, recording, because like I said, it runs twenty four hours a day. YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, the Yo Show. It's terrific. And uh, like I said, we will get there. We reach people. We get new people to check it out all the time. And I said the goal behind Wednesday nights is to bring new guest co-hosts and bring their friends in and say, like, hey, this is not too bad. But I don't want you to think it's a one and done, Allie. I would love to welcome you back in the near future to do it again. I thought I think you're terrific. I had such a blast with you the last two nights. Um, you're fun. You're definitely cool. Your dog is gorgeous. <laughs> And um, thank you. And thank you for everybody that has uh, watched and checked out. Big thanks to DJ Herbert Holler. Don't forget, folks, Friday night, Philly, the Mooshaloo Boat Club down in Philly. And then Saturday. It's going to be so hype. So get out and check it out. Yeah, it's going to be hype. That's going to be badass. And it really seems like a guy that knows how to bring the party. Saturday, September 17th so at the cool. Showboat Sandlot. Right? Very cool. And I like how he threw that Jewish thing out there. That was great. <laughs> September 17th at the Showboat Sandlot in Atlantic City. The Off the Hook Music and Seafood Festival. Check it out. Don't Herbert finish. Howard. He is fantastic. Let me give you his links again real quick before we go. I'll cut off Allie's links. If you haven't been watching all night, that's where you can find Ali, check her out on TikTok at Violet Vixen. That TikTok, Violet Vixen on Instagram. Check out her pictures. Be kind, though. Don't be perverted. Show some respect well, for our you. Can be a little perverted. That's okay. We're a little perverted. Just no, no uh, bare anatomy photos. Get no, no dick pics. No <clears throat> dick pics. No dick pics. I'm good. I got into my wife's pants by being clever and a good conversationalist, and she loves it to this day. DJ Herbert Holler, if you want to find these great events and more, www.herbertholler.com. Instagram and Facebook at Herbert Holler. Instagram at Freedom Party New York City. NYC is where you find out all about the Freedom Party. That is it for tonight. I'm going to queue up the music to get us out of here. Allie, again, I can't thank you enough for being absolutely sensational. This was a oh, blast and a great so last much. two nights. Thank you. And we will so talk much again. Fun. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody that tuned in. We're going to take you out of here with St. Ricketts and the Catalyst. This is the most awkward part where I got to download the music and restart it. Uh, let's start right a bit. It's got a little intro that St. Ricketts hates as well, so I'll get past that intro a little bit. And I already started it. I was stupid. Okay. <laughs> uh, for Allie and Jeff and Six and Henry and Hannah, have yourselves a great night. A great week. And we'll see you again on Tuesday night with The Yo Show. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 
Es mi deseo. Introduce yourself. Come 